By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are going to look at another match from the Ufton Troll Cup. And this time I believe we are in the quarterfinals. And we are looking at Ron, who is playing with a deck named Troll Valley. And he's taking on Coach Kramer, who's playing with a Power Monolith deck. So that is a combo deck. Now, before I go to the actual deck decks, I've got beautiful pictures of both of these decks. I would just first like to inform you that you can also check the description below. There you will find several timestamps, one of them entitled Games. If you click on that, I believe it's MTG Games, and then it takes you straight to the actual action. If you want to go and uh, look at the deck tech first, just stick around because that's exactly what we are going to do now. And we are going to start with the deck of Ron Troll Valley. And here we see the deck of Ron and this deck is named Troll Valley and it's named after the four trolls that are in this deck and the card Diamond Valley. For the people that don't know, Diamond Valley is a card, a land from the Arabian Nights, but it doesn't tap for mana. When you tap this land, you can sacrifice one of your creatures and gain life equal to its toughness. So of course you got to sacrifice a creature you control. Um, and this works very well with cards like Preacher, Control Magic, but it also works really well with the card Rook Ag. So you can see a full playset of Rook Ags in this deck. Rook Ag is an 0-3 creature from Arabian Nights. And when you sack it, you get a 4-4 flying bird at the end of your turn. So that, of course, is quite interesting. So with Diamond Valley, you gain 3 life and you gain a 4-4 flyer at the end of your turn, which is a pretty good deal. Now, when we look at this deck, at first glance, you may think, is this another troll disco deck? It's actually not, because there's only one Nevenerals Disc. Now, Nevenerals Disc obviously does wonders in this deck as well, because you can regenerate your trolls, and if you destroy all your eggs, you get 4-4 flyers in return. But what we can see is that Ron has made some original decisions here, upping the amount of blue cards in his deck. We see two Control Magics. Now, I'm kind of used to seeing blue, and people just splash it for the blue power, which is understandable. Uh, but not always as exciting. And here we see Ron choosing to add some more blue. So he's got three counter spells in the mana drain. He's got the two control magics, which work very well with the diamond valleys. He's also playing with time twister. So that's a nice card to see here. And with brain geyser, of course, kind of a no brainer because <laughs> it's, it's just such a strong card Two blue and X to draw X cards. It's, it's truly an amazing card in old school. Um, let's take a look at the other cards. We see a lot of usual suspects in this deck. We see the Demonic Tutor, we see the Mind Twist. I think Ron doesn't leave the home without his Mind Twist, so I'm not surprised to find it in this deck. And then the sideboard is pretty interesting. He can kind of, he doesn't have a transitional sideboard, but as you can see, there are four Neverneurals Discs in his sideboard, so he can go full Troll Disco plan if he wants to. He's also playing with uh, four Serendips in his sideboard. Another interesting choice. So he can kind of change the whole look and feel to the deck. He can get, he can go way more um, into blue if he wants to with those four dips. And he could, for example, choose to take out the eggs and play a more aggro style with the dips. Um, okay, so this is the deck of Ron. Let's go and take a look at the deck of Ghost Power Monolith. And here we see the deck of Coast. It's a classic. It is a power monolith deck. It is a typical combo deck. It's kind of well known in old school. And every now and then you see it at a tournament and it usually does pretty well. And I think it's it's doing pretty well here at the Often Troll Cup. So for the people that don't know, this deck revolves around the card Basalt Monolith and Power Artifact. Now, Basalt Monolith is an artifact you can cast for three. You can tap it for three and you get three generic mana back. So you can just... It's 3-3-3, three, 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 basically. Now, the unique thing about Basil Monolith is that you can pay 3 mana to untap it, and you can do that whenever. You don't have to do it during your upkeep, like with Mana Vault, for example. No. With Basil Monolith, whenever you've got 3 mana laying around, you can use it to untap your, your Monolith. And um, you can combine this with the card Power Artifact, and you can create infinite mana. Now, Power Artifact is an enchant artifact from Antiquities for 2 blue, and it says the activation cost of an artifact is reduced by two. Now, you pay three mana to untap the Basil Monolith, but because of the power artifact, this effect is reduced by two, so you only pay one mana to untap it, and then you can tap it again for three, you can untap it for one, you can tap it for three. Do you see where I'm going at? Infinite mana, it's a loop. 
So when you have this infinite mana, you of course want to use it to win, right? Now, you can do something fun like cast a Colossus of Sardia, but that's not going to give you the victory. So what most competitive power monolith decks do, they uh, play with fireballs. And here you can see Coase has made the same decision. He's playing with three fireballs. Uh, interesting, by the way, you would have thought that maybe he would have chosen Disintegrate over Fireball just because he's playing in the often troll tournament. So all those trolls have regeneration. But okay, it's still uh, a Fireball is does the same thing as a Disintegrate basically in his deck. It's just going to send, I don't know, a zillion points because you've got infinite mana anyway to the opponent, in this case, run and win the game. So... What you want to do with this deck is assemble Basic Monolith, Power Artifact, and a Fireball, or maybe a Brain Geyser can actually also do the job because you can just let your opponent draw a zillion cards, and then as soon as it's his draw step, his library is all emptied out, and he's deck dead. So that's another way of winning the game. Now, um, in a combo deck like this, what you want to do is you want to stay alive until your combo is on the table. So you add a lot of control elements in the deck. So we see four counter spells, we see four power sinks, we see a mana drain. So that's a lot of counter magic. And I actually know that Coast is quite of a, um, a good counter player. So he knows when to counter and what to counter. So that's going to be very interesting to look at. And also you play, um, you know, you play with your Wheel of Fortune to kind of try to dig for cards. I also think that balance is very strong here because Coast is not playing with any creatures himself and he's playing with a lot of artifacts because remember, Balance doesn't count in Shamans and Artifacts. So if you've got a lot of Artifacts on the board, that doesn't hurt you at all when you cast your Balance. Um, in the sideboard, we see Red Elemental Blast. We see Blue Elemental Blast. Not really a surprise here, but it is a pretty strong sideboard. We do see a nice Often Troll there. So that's pretty sweet that you've added that one, Coast. We see two Glooms and we see three Abyss. And I think the Abyss uh, can really do some work against those uh, weenie decks, those little weenie creature decks. It's not going to do much... I think, in this matchup against uh, Ron. Also interesting here, the choice to add two underground seas to his sideboard. So that means that if he really wants to go, um, you know, and add his glooms and his abysses, for example, against a white weenie-like deck, then he can also has to, then he also has two uh, underground sea seas to kind of add to, um, to his uh, uh, to his land base. And maybe you're wondering here, why is he playing with four basic islands? Why not change two basic islands for two underground sea? Well, the answer to the question is Blood Moon, right? And I think it's a really good decision from Coase here to go with four basics. Also, the Felwer Stones can also help him. But remember, he doesn't have a disenchant or, or anything, any way to get really rid of the Blood Moon. If somebody casts a Blood Moon, he, he's going to have to... or counter it or the blood moon is just there to stay well he's got his single um single chaos orb of course but that's not really a strategy so i really like uh, the decision here by coast to add those four basic islands so good for you coast compliment here for me i don't know what that's worth but i think it's a good decision so uh these are the decks now let's go to the games Game number one, we're seeing Ron sitting on the left against Coase here sitting on the right. And uh, both players just cut their decks, drawing their first seven. And let's take a look. Are they going to keep what they have? And uh, let's hope for a glitch-free recording here, which is always hard because these players are all playing online. They have different circumstances, different connections. And here we see Coast starting with a beautiful basic island, and there a volcanic by Ron and a Mox Jet. No demonic tutor, passing turn here. There we see a City of Brass by Coast and passing turn here to Ron. So both players kind of starting slowly. Of course, Coast now has full counter capability. Remember, he's playing with four power sinks four counter spells and a mana drain. So this is kind of a situation that Coes is quite happy with. A slow start from Ron, he can sit back and he can counter and he can now assemble all his pieces. So that's kind of the way I think that Coes is, is looking at these games here. And maybe the way you shoot, when you're a combo player, you just want to stay alive until you have your combo assembled and then out of nowhere, like kind of steal the game here. And this of course is a hard card for counter players to deal with. It is the Mishra's Factory. And, um, you know, I've called it the best creature in old school for a reason in my top 10 list. I just think it's such a strong card here. Look at this. It looks like Coast is going to do something. Tapping City of Brass and a basic island, dropping to 19. 
There we go, a Sylvan Library, and here is a Counterspell. Then the question is, will we see a counter to Counterspell situation here from Coase? That is, of course, a little bit dangerous for him. So how much does he value his Sylvan? That's the question now. And he decides to put it in the bin. I think it's a good decision. You don't want to open yourself up. You know, if Coase, of course, I don't know his hand, which makes a big um, influence in his reasoning. But if he would counter the Counterspell, he would be completely open. And here we see Ron activating the factory, attacking for two here, and Coast dropping to 17. And Coast passing turn, or I should say Ron passing turn, and keeping his two blue open as well. I think Ron is playing, when we looked at the deck photo, I think he's playing with three counter spells. So not as many as, as Coast. There we see a Felwer Stone. That's probably gonna resolve here, exactly, and pass turn. Now, Felwer is making uh, blue and red now for Coast because of that Volcanic Island and Basic Island. Another Volcanic Island here. And usually these Felwer Stones are very good in old school because a lot of players play with City of Brass. And when there's a City of Brass on the table, your Felwer Stone can make any color of mana. Oi, oi, oi! There is a often troll and a thumbs up here from Coast. And uh, this is, of course, the Often Troll Cup. So it's always good to see these trolls. And a lot of players were playing with them, actually. And, oh, we do see a counter spell on the Often Troll. And I think that um, the reason that Coase is doing this here is he's thinking, you know, an Often Troll on the table, which is a hard creature to deal with once it's on the board. Oh, I like this by Ron Ancestral Recall after this. Smart move by Ron. Um, and what I wanted to say is Coast is probably thinking Andy up control on the board with the Mistress Factory. That means four damage a turn. And that's just a little bit too much. So I, I do think it's a good decision to counter. But of course, that Ancestral Recall here, great move. And uh, that is that is giving Ron some advantage here, filling up his hand again. I mean, Counter Magic, Counter Spell is a very strong card, but it's just a one for one trade in the end. You know, it's the same as a Swords and a Disenchant. They're extremely strong cards, but you basically change one card uh, for another. There seems to be a little a glitch here on the screen, by the way, but it looks like we're back. And let's see. Ghost is playing. Ooh, this is a strong card here Chaos Orb. And this is this is a good moment actually for Coast to cast his Chaos Orb because Ron is tapped out right now. Tapping his city, taking a damage, going to 16. Balance! Oh, after that Ancestral Recall coming back with the balance. Now this is quality magic. Now the only thing, and I'm sure that Coast is is well not regretting this, but having that in the back of, of his mind as well, is he doesn't have two blue open anymore to counter. That's that's the only Small little little thing that doesn't make it a completely a perfect play, but this is a really nice way to bounce back from that ancestral recall. So now all of a sudden, both hands are now at three, and he's got a chaos orb on the table. So that's not too shabby. And of course, chaos orb is one of those ways. Oh, an ancestral recall by Kosier. Man, this is brutal. So despite the fact that Ron had a really good turn, I mean, look at this power here um, displayed by Kos. Look at that. He's going to flip as well. What is he going to flip on, I wonder? Let's first see if the flip hits, and then we'll see what card. Flip hits, I think. Oh, it's the Mox Jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's kind of worried maybe to walk into a Mind Twist. And of course, a Demonic Tutor is also a very strong card, so you kind of know by taking care of that Mox. Now, unfortunately for Kosi, Ron is finding a Badlands. And that's a nice altered one, by the way, I believe by the artist himself. Ooh, Anime Dead, is he bringing back the Troll? <laughs> that would be cool. That's probably going to be the Rook Act, though. That's, that's the better move to make here, I, I think, at least. He's looking at his hand. Let's see what he's going to do. And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going for the Rook Act. That does make sense. I think that is the best play. Now remember, um, Anime Dead does give minus one, minus O. Oh. It's not really relevant because the Rook Act is an O3 anyway. So it's an O3 card. When it dies, Ron will get a 4-4 four, four bird token, a flying bird token. Attacking it for two, Coast going down to 15. And, or 14, actually. And now let's see. 
So Ron keeping his islands there untapped. He's pretty low on cards though. I believe only two cards in hand. And of course, Coast is kind of in the advantage here after that resolved Ancestral Recall playing another City of Brass. Still got 14 life. If, I mean, if he has it now, he can just play out the combo. Basil Monolith for three, Power Artifact for two blue. And then cast a huge Fireball. But he doesn't have it or else he would. Although, I mean, Ron has, of course, his blue open. He plays with Counter Magic. Already one Counter Spell in the bin. So two more Counter Spells in the deck of Ron, I believe. Perhaps also a Mana Drain now that I think about it. So maybe there are more Counter Spells in his deck. There is a Time Walk. And I always kind of feel that these cards are also there to kind of lure out a possible counter spell from Ron. And Ron is saying, you know what, it's okay. And I think that's a good decision. And, oh, wow, cool. I'm liking this game. It's like it's going, going everywhere. There's a time twister. That means that both players will shuffle up. I wonder if Ron really minds because he's, he, he's lower on cards. It looks like he does. Plays a counter spell. So he really respects... The combo deck of Kos here saying, you know what, it's just too risky. And I have to say it makes sense after that time walk. It does. It's, I, it's actually, it's a good decision, Ron, of course. He had the time walk, that extra turn. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Look at that beautiful black bordered a Wheel of Fortune. Oh, what a sweet game number one this is. And now it's just hoping... Ron is hoping that Coast cannot find his combo pieces because he also has the Black Lotus. And there is a Mox Ruby. He can sac. He's got he's got more than enough mana. If he has the cards he needs, he's got this in the bag. So he needs Basil Monolith, Power Artifact, Fireball. And he's got this. And look at Ron, he only has one blue open, so he cannot counter, he only has that Volcanic Island. Let's see, tapping two here. Regrowth, interesting. Is there anything in the bin there? Regrowing Ancestral, so he's really digging here to find his combo pieces. Tapping Felwer Stone for one blue, drawing three cards here. And when we look at his mana in total, he's got six mana still. So that's still enough to do what he wants. He needs six exactly. Three to cast Basil, two to cast Power, one to cast Fireball. And of course, when he has Basil Monolith Power Artifact, he has infinite colorless mana. So that's no problem. But he does need the power pieces. He does need the pieces here. Going through his graveyard again. So that's actually a good sign for Ron. But Coase has been drawing so many cards, I wonder what he has. Maybe he just has a bunch of power sinks. I mean, he plays with four power sinks. So looking at his hand again. There is end of turn lightning bolt. And this is actually why I I do like from from a synergy point or a combo point, I guess. I'm not really sure how to call it, but I like Chain Lightning onto your Rook Egg more because then you can pay uh, two more and deal three damage to your opponent or kill a creature to your opponent's side, whatever. But the great thing, of course, about Lightning Bolt is you can do it on instant speed. So in this case, he's saying, hey, in your end step, Ghost, I'm going to kill my Rook Egg. And that means you get a 4-4 Bird in Ghost's turn. And that means that Ron now has his 4-4 Four four flyer without summoning sickness, so he can just go in here for four, and and th that's a pretty big impact actually. That that's a big difference here. So that means that Coast is dropping to ten, and he's got he's got to be worried a little bit. Like I actually expected him to assemble his combo pieces last turn. He was drawing so many cards. There is a mind twist. Oh, and Coast really needs to counter this. Going to nine. Playing a counter spell. Does Ron have a counter spell on the counter? Oh, ho, ho, mana drain. Second the Lotus. Oh, power sink. Oh, man. I have to say I'm cheering here because 
I'm just not a fan of the mind twist, but it was a brilliant move by Ron nonetheless. I mean, this is the way you want to do it. You know you're playing against a heavy counter deck and you have to try it. So I really understand and respect this mind twist. And there was a counter spell on the twist and Ron expected that playing a, playing a counter spell from his hand. And then there was that power sink. I think, and I mean, I've, I've said it before, I think counter a counter magic deck becomes much, much better with that Black Lotus on board because it's it just allows you to always counter and that's exactly what happened. And here we see the combo going off by Kos. It's the end of the line. The Demonic Tutor was enough to find the final piece of the puzzle here. Wow, I was still kind of discussing that whole mind twist counter scenario. Um, but here, this is how quickly it can go when you play against combo decks like the Power Monolith deck. Basically, you know, Demonic Tutor is exceptionally strong it's always strong but exceptionally strong in a combo deck because it's basically one of the pieces you need and every single piece you could need because you, you can choose the card and i think that's exactly what happened here so Kos winning this first one now both players are going to the sideboard and i think this will benefit ron because ron now knows okay i'm playing against a power monolith deck this is what my opponent wants to do these are the pieces that I have to make sure they don't hit the table at the same time. So Ron has more information now. And I think for Kos, it is kind of harder because Ron kind of plays with a mid-range deck with a lot of different answers. So looking forward to game number two. Let's let these players sideboard and uh, we'll come back in game two. Game number two here between Troll Valley and Power Monolith. So Power Monolith deck has won the first game. That means that Ron, he has to win this if he wants to stay in his own tournament because he is also the organizer of the Often Troll Cup. And usually this is a face-to-face -face tournament, but of course, due to all everything that's going on in the world, it has been changed to an online event. A lot of fun nonetheless. And it's really cool to see so many old school players coming together just on this, uh, on this one day event. And there we see a shuffle up here by both players. Actually, they're both taking a mulligan. And of course, we're playing according to the London mulligan rules. That means that both players get to see seven, seven new cards and they have to pick one because it's the first mulligan and put one of those cards at the bottom of their library. And let me know what you think about this London mulligan, by the way. I um, My experience with it has been very positive so far as in, you know, I do believe you get, non, you get less non-games as they call it with this new mulligan rule. But there are also some people that say, you know, with old school and all the power cards that you have, um, you know, a time twister, uh, balance, of course, um, you know, there are just a lot of ways, ancestral recall, so there are a lot of ways to take advantage of the London Mulligan rule. I haven't really seen it that often yet. So, or maybe I haven't noticed it, but let me know in the comments below what you think about this new Mulligan rule and is it in, an, in the advantage of certain players and certain decks? Uh, let's take a look first. Is Coast going to keep this? He is putting it on the bottom. Ron putting his on the bottom. So both players starting with six cards. And now the question is, is did Ron choose to start? Probably so, because he knows I'm playing against the combo deck. So I wanna I wanna gain speed. And I wonder if he boarded in his surrender Fritz as well for that same reasoning. Like you want to put full pressure on Kos and he's having a nice cup of coffee there. Good to go Kos. Volcanic Island by Ron, so we're off to the races. And what I wanted to say is um, that I think Ron, you know, he now knows the plan of Kos, so he's going to try to put a lot of pressure here early game. Let's see if that's gonna work out. Wow, Soul Ring, Mox Jet into Soul Ring, pass turn, no follow up. So that's a lot of mana here for Kos. And of course, Ron now knows, okay, he doesn't have two blue, but he's playing with power sync, so he could power sync my spells here. There is a Mox Ruby. And let's see, there seems to be a little glitch here. Connection interrupted here for a moment. But it will come back. There we go. It is back. Look at that. It's played a Library of Alexandria, which is not all too relevant at the moment because he's pretty low in cards after the mulligan and he's playing a Serendip Efreet. So he's kind of taken the risk to go and play the Serendip thinking, you know, if he has the power sink, he has it. But if he doesn't, I can put so much pressure and there he does have it. So, <laughs> and this kind of shows why power sink is also a pretty good counterspell and in some cases a better counterspell than counterspell 
or mana drain because you don't need the double blue and of course it also taps the mana of your opponent which is not very relevant but look at this here Ko's playing ancestral recall refilling his hand playing a mox ruby i'm sure he's looking for another blue could this be maybe that blue source because he wants to keep his counter magic open he needs to stop Ron as much as he can. And he's been pretty successful so far with the Power Sync on the Serenip and now followed up by an Ancestral Recall. It looks like he's a little bit in the tank though. He wanted to play out something, took it back to his hand. I wonder what it is. I thought it was a land, but if it's a land then, why is he still thinking it is a land? Tropical Island, tapping here. Okay, so... Playing a regrowth. Doesn't have any blue mana to play it. Oh, he does. <laughs> okay, sorry. My bad. Spoke too soon. There was the Black Lotus. Cracking it for three blue. Playing Ancestral Recall. Two blue floating. And playing a Chaos Orb for that. So pretty powerful moves here by Coast. But I think if you're Ron, you're probably thinking, okay, he doesn't have a counter. He cannot counter now. Doesn't have any blue mana open. Of course, he does have that Chaos Orb that you have to keep in mind. I wonder if he's going to flip already because, you know, Ron only has three mana sources so far. But Kos is deciding not to passing turn here because he kind of know, you know, when you're playing against Ron, he's got a lot of creatures that he can play out for three. On the other hand, the chance that he has another land drop is pretty high here because he's still got, you know, a decent amount of cards in hand. Playing Underground C, tapping three here, and there is a Sextral. Now remember, the Sextral is a 3-3 because of the Underground Sea. I wonder if Coast cannot counter this. I mean, he cannot flip on the Troll because I think it can still regenerate if I'm not mistaken. It's just one black to regenerate, right? And he's not, he's untapping. Looking at his hand, I mean, he's got a zillion mana but he just needs his pieces of the puzzle and he can do exactly what we saw in game one. As soon as he has those pieces, you're dead. There's not a lot of things you can do about it. And he is going to flip. And Ron is cho choosing to put a regeneration shield on the Sedge Troll. And the interesting thing is you activate your Chaos Orb and the way it works is you then ask your opponent, do you want to respond? You don't tell your opponent what you're going to flip on. So first your opponent has to choose to respond. And that's why Ron is already tapping. Oh, it's a missed flip. Already tapping his underground C, but this is a missed flip. And I think the flip was on the underground C, by the way, and not on the set troll because the set troll had the regeneration shield. And oh, I'm liking this play, the mind twist. And of course, um, you know, the Chaos Orb activation earlier kind of forced Ron to tap his Underground C, so then Ghost was sure that he could just play it and nothing could come out of the hand of Ron, like, for example, Ancestral Recall. So, uh, yeah, interesting. So that way he still got some value out of that Chaos Orb flip. So that means that Ron is empty-handed, but he still has three power on the board, which is not too shabby. So let's see what his top deck is. Attacking here, putting Coast on 17. He wants to put pressure on. It must be stressful. Ron kind of knows now what kind of deck he's playing against. And this is actually not too bad. Mistress Factory cannot be countered. And next turn, he can attack for five. So that is actually a pretty good top deck for Ron. So Coast has card advantage, but I mean, he's looking at five damage per turn. That's not good news for him. Did Ron find something else to put more pressure on the board? Maybe a Serendip. Tapping here for four. Okay. Oh, there we see a Mind Twist. Can Coast counter this? Cannot counter it. Oh, and this could be decisive, actually. Because Coast is out of cards. And Ron is Mind Twisting him back. And this could give him the victory. Coast already on 14. He's going to go in for 5 here. Putting him on, on 9. That's exactly what's going to happen here. Coast on 9. He's got 2 turns to find a solution here. Wow. 
You mind twist your opponent. What does your opponent do? He mind twists you back. I mean, that's the way it's, it, it, it should always be. If somebody mind twists you, you should just top instantly top deck your mind twist. Or a balance, which is quite nice. Or a time twister. Anyway, there there are there are a few cards you can you can you can draw to bounce back from from a mind twist. There's a demonic tutor. Oh, and this is a power sink. But it's not it's not too bad for Ron actually. Right? I I do I wonder, but I don't know what's in his hand, of course, because maybe he could have finished the game already if he wasn't able to to power sink. Probably it's probably why he did. What I wanted to say, he could have decided to to first attack with his Mishra's Factory, deal five, and then play the Demonic after. And I'm tapping now, because now I guess Ghost has one extra turn. And again, again, this was really a nice display of how powerful Power Sync is, right? It also taps down those Mishra's Factories. But Ghost is only on one, so I mean, he can top deck. I wonder what's in his hand. He really needs he needs a small miracle because he, I mean, let's say it draws into a balance, get gets rid of a set troll. Okay, it's game already. Then still the Mishra's factory is still on the board. So it's yeah, it was difficult. I think he needed something like like a draw seven, like it will have forced North Time Twister to get out of this. Anyway, it is one one, and I'm pretty happy with that because that means we get to see another full game of these two beautiful decks. So we'll let these players shuffle up. And we'll catch back up with them in game number three. Game number three, and this is the decider. So who is going to continue in this tournament and who is going to drop? And is Ron then, after this game, we'll know if Ron is still in the running to win his own tournament. There we see the opening from Coast Volcanic Island, a Mox into a Felwer Stone. Oh, Library of Alexandria. That could be a killer here for Kos. And it's actually double painful because also the Felverstone doesn't produce any mana yet. Uh, because, uh, look, what is he going to play? Oh, and I don't think this is possible. Uh, playing the Basalt Monolith, taking it back now, I think he realized it. The Felverstone is not making any mana at the moment because there's only a Loa at the side of Ron and there needs to be colored mana on the side of Ron for Felwerstone to work. Now it now it is operational with that volcanic island and also a mox from Ron here. And drawing card number eight. And playing a time walk. Wow. I mean Ron is off to a flying start here. And remember the time walk also means that Ron gets of course a card for his extra turn, but also a card because he has that Loa. So it's actually two cards two card advantage and an extra land drop so early in the game and it looks like Coast is not countering it. And then, of course, the question is, does that mean that he doesn't have any counter magic or does it mean that he's waiting for other things that may happen? For example, a Surrender Befreed could be an option now. No, we see, wow, more power here hitting the board. One of them being a Black Lotus. It looks like it's a signed copy. And what is Ron going to do? Is he going off the Loa plan already? Will we see? Oh, I was actually expecting a mind twist, but it's Neveneral's disc. Neveneral's disc is a big problem for Coast. Not right now, so you might wonder why would he worry about that. There is a counterspell. I'm not surprised about this counterspell because Neveneral's disc, as soon as it untaps, it is completely devastating for Coast. All, let's say he plays uh, a Basil Monolith, right? And Ron doesn't do anything yet, but then Coast plays the power artifact over the Basil Monolith. Then in response, Ron can pop the disc, and there's nothing that Coast can do about it. So for for Coast, a disc is just very very annoying and can really disrupt all his combo plans. So I really understand this counter spell. And it looks like Ron is a little bit in the tank here. Maybe he's contemplating: Do I want to use the Lotus? Cracking the Lotus here. There is the Serenip I talked about earlier. Serenip of Freed coming in from the sideboard. And uh, the 3-4 flyer that can start dealing some damage next turn. Let's see if Coast can find a way to deal with it. And I think it is a little bit difficult for Coast actually to deal with threats that are on the board. Okay, I've said it. I take it back. <laughs> of course, he's playing the Abyss. For some reason, I forgot all about that enchantment. That is actually a perfect answer. Also because Ron, to my, no to my knowledge, is not playing with, you know, Suchi 
or Juggernaut is not having any artifact creatures, the only creature actually that's quite difficult for Coach to deal with is Mishra's Factory. So, but it looks like Ron hasn't found it yet playing a Batlands. Let's see what he can do. And interesting, of course, this is a deciding game. So you, you often see that players are taking some more time to make their decisions. And there is a Nevenerald Disc. What I find difficult about the Abyss, I mean, you see the Abyss often, but you don't see it often enough to, for example, say, I'm going to uh, board in another Enchant World, right? Because the nice thing is with the Enchant World rule, if you play another Enchant World, the uh, Enchant Worlds are destroyed, right? So uh, a way to deal with uh, the Abyss is by playing a Concordant Crossroads, for example. So you don't necessarily need to have enchant re removal. I guess that's kind of my point. But of course, a Nevenerals disc will work absolutely fine. And wow, if Ron can activate his Nevenerals disc, and I think he can, this will be devastating for Kos. I mean, he's taking his time to do it. He's playing Brain Geyser, and here is a Power Sink. And now the question is, is Ron going to use his mana to activate the Nevenerals disc? I think, yeah, I think this is a good decision by Ron. You don't want to take the risk because if he's completely tapped out, then there's an opening for Coase to kind of destroy that disc. And this is devastating here for Coase. Losing so many key pieces, losing the Abyss, but also losing his Basil Monolith. And his hand, how many cards are in there? Two cards for Coase? That's not a lot. Mind twist to make matters worse. We do see a counter spell, but that only saves him one card. So it's looking, it's looking bad for Ghost here. Only one in hand. And I guess what Ron needs to do is or just draw up up to seven again that he can activate his low or start playing threats. And he's kind of in that on that crossroad and he can make that decision now. Asking about Ghost's graveyard. And it looks like he's decided to just draw back up to seven to get that low active unless he can find a better alternative. It's not quite sure how many cards he has in hand. It looks like about four cards, maybe five. And there is a regrowth taking a damage from the City of Brass. Tapping the regrowth here, tapping the city for green, of course. And he's going to dig for something. I think he's forgetting to take the damage. Uh, although it's just one damage, it still it's a damage. And there is a mind twist again, a double mind twist. This is just brutal for Kos here. And um, passing turn. Kos now drawing up to four. Interesting here, and I guess Ron has now kind of decided, let's see, yeah, the low is active again. So he's decided to kind of draw, after that mind twist, draw until he has an active Loa. And now he has. And I mean, things are looking really bad for Kos. I mean, at least the good thing is that he's still on 18 or 17. I'm not quite sure. Um, but I mean, Ron is drawing twice the amount of cards because of the Loa. And I mean, he's probably got tons of counter magic in hand. And there is another Abyss. So are we going to see a counter spell? I mean, Ron has a full grip of cards here. He has to have something against this Abyss. It looks like he doesn't. He just passes turn, draw a card, and that's it. It's a little bit hard now to follow, by the way, because Ron's screen is pretty glitchy at the moment. And as far as I can tell, Ron still has a full grip of cards because of the low. He's now staring at the Abyss. Not really being able to play out any creatures probably because of that. And I was kind of surprised that he wasn't able to counter it. There we see a lightning bolt. So instead of discarding, he's deciding to bolt. So we see Ko's going to 15. And let's see what else is he going to do. Does he still have a full hand playing another lightning bolt? So Ko's going to 12, passing turn. So it's probably on six or seven cards right now, Ron. And there we see a Black Lotus from Ko's. Not really what he's looking for right now. 
I guess it could still be be relevant. For example, when he has to play a huge power sink, it could help. And it looks like Kos is kind of in the tank here. And oh, I like this time twister. It would be cool if this resolves. There, Ron, fishing for another card. Probably already has the counter spell in hand. I'm really expecting. Okay, there we see a red elemental blast taking care of that. Now, the big question is does Kos have an answer? Does he maybe have a blue elemental blast? Would be really nice for the game if he has a blue elemental blast. And does he have one? Or maybe a counter spell? Power sync could work because of the Black Lotus, but no, he doesn't. Okay, so it goes into the bin, unfortunately, here. Would have been really nice for the game, but I do understand from Ron's perspective, you definitely want to counter that Time Twister. Because as soon as, as, as Coase has those pieces, he wins the game, it's over. And there we see a strip mine. And looking at his hand again. It's kind of this 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 standstill scenario where I kind of feel that both players are, of course, Kos is trying to assemble his combo, and Ron is kind of thinking what to do, how to play with the abyss on the table. And he's actually choosing to discard instead of playing anything out. Wow, discarding a Diamond Valley. Passing turn here to Kos. And I'm actually surprised that Kos is still in this. And that, that Abyss is really keeping him alive right now, I think. Because Ron is just not able to put any creature on the board. Mishra's Factory would be quite nice right now for, for, uh, for Ron. It's a creature he can't counter. It doesn't care about the Abyss and he can start dealing damage. Looks like Ron's going to play something out. Okay, there's a Rook Egg. So, of course, the Rook Eki will have to sack to the Abyss, but that's going to take a full turn. And then he gets a 4-4 bird back. We also see him discard the Rook Eki. This is interesting. I cannot really... F he wants to keep his counter magic on board. Like, I get that. You know, I understand. That's probably the reason why, why he's doing this. The thing is, knowing Ron a little bit and knowing Coase a little bit is I think both of these players are now having maybe, especially Ron because he's drawing so many cards with the Loa, he probably has double counter spell in hand. So he's playing super cautious. He probably has a red elemental blast and a counter spell in hand. That's what I think. He just wants to make absolutely sure that he's not going to lose against his combo. He knows he's ahead with the Loa, so he just wants to make sure that he keeps control of the game. And there we're going to see the Rook Egg being sacrificed to the Abyss. And remember, the 4-4 Flyer doesn't come in, into play until the end step. And he's drawing a card, drawing an extra card from the Loa. So he's back on nine cards now. And if he can find another creature, because he can then choose to sack, he just get two creatures on the board. Okay, there we see an Ancestral Recall. And I think it makes sense here for Coase just to let it resolve. I mean, Ron is ahead in cards anyway. That's a given. Coase is not going to win that battle. He might as well just keep, if he has a counter spell, keep that counter spell for a possible counter war when he tries to play out his own, um, his own combo pieces. So I understand he's just letting this resolve. He's not even looking at his hand. But what is Ron going to do here? Tapping three down. Playing a Satch Troll, so this could be worth countering. Although, wow, so now he's chosen a path to go. He's saying, okay, I've got my 4-4 Flyer coming in at the end of turn. I'm just going to drop a lot of creatures. And yeah, I'll have to sack one to the Abyss. Discarding a beautiful Wheel of Fortune, by the way, but that makes absolute sense with that Loa and the whole card situation for Ron. A Wheel would be great for Coast and would not really help Ron, so completely understandable. Interesting. There we see a fireball. And I wonder for how many is he going to cast this fireball on the Setch Troll. Interesting. He's not regenerating it. So this is another interesting thing. He wants to keep his mana open because you may wonder why isn't he regenerating it. 
But he's doing that because he wants to keep his mana open to counter possible uh, combo pieces where we see another fireball and now we do see a counter spell and will we see a blue elemental blast on this counter spell from Kos? That is the question. No, we see an ancestral recall. Kos dropping to 11, gonna draw or is there gonna be a red elemental blast? Yeah, there is red elemental blast on the ancestral recall. This is really bad news for Kos here and this is actually what I just discussed Oh, look at that. Both players, connection lost. Okay, they're back. This is what I discussed. Uh, you know, when, when you're playing against an opponent with so many cards all the time because of that Loa, and there he has to sack the Surrendip, um, you're kind of expecting a double counterspell capability. And I think what Kos it really well was kind of trying to lure out those counterspells from Ron here, attacking Kos, dropping to seven. And is he able to play another creature? He has to keep feeding to the Abyss. And because of that counter war, he's kind of gone off the Loa plan. Oh, we see Fireball. Okay, that's it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. I was Because with Fireball, I keep thinking about Kose's deck, and I was kind of expecting Ron to, um, uh, to, uh, to finish it with creatures, actually. But of course, he's playing with Fireball as well. So Ron, congratulations. You're still in your own tournament. And Coast, man, it was a joy to look at your deck. And I think this is something that a lot of combo players, um, you know, have experienced in that first game you win, but you do give away your strategy. And then, of course, in the second and the third game, your opponents can adapt to that. And uh, But this was an exciting game three. This, wow, just a whole matchup. So thank you both. Uh, um, thank you, Coast, and thank you, Ron, for this match. And thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic now if you want to support the channel you are already doing that by watching this um, if you like what you see share this on your socials leave a comment leave a like that helps as well you can also click a notification bell so that you will be notified every time when i post a new video which is usually on tuesday friday and on sunday i have my special meal days um, if you want to stay uh, see more uh, uh, of this tournament, stay tuned because I'll be posting more videos of the Often Troll Cup, including the finals. But that's going to take, I think, another week before the final match is going to come on the channel. For now, thank you very much for watching. Oh, and before I forget, you can also support Timmy Talks financially. You can become a sponsor of the channel via Patreon. There's probably a card popping up right now. You can click on that link that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and there you can see what you can do to support the channel. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's meet the fantastic, the amazing, the super channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazee.